At Grand Prix Denver, we met Taylor Noyes and interviewed him on his standard deck. I have my take on Boros. It's a pretty good deck. I like the, I like the tempo. It's kind of my style, like aggro-ish, but it has, has back doors and responses. It's not all in beatdown. Well, the reason I cut Teetering Peaks was a lot of it had to do with its comes into play attacks ability. Now, we're running a play set of Steppy Links and a play set of Plated GP. That means we want our lands coming into play untapped every turn, and we'll want as many fetch lands as we can get. Teetering Peaks honestly slows us down. I'd rather have Terramorphic Expanse. Even though the land comes into play tapped, it's still a fetch land on top of the other 12 that were already running. I was originally testing Spike Shot Elder. I was okay, it was a good mid-game threat and a good equipment target for my swords. However, over time I noticed that it was actually hurting me and slowing me down in the long run. And it really kind of messed up my tempo. That, that three mana activated ability with double red is kind of hard to get around, especially when you're trying to win on turn four or five. Squadron Hawk's more for those slower games. Um, when we need to refuel our hands, and we already have like a sword of body in mind or a feast and famine, and they day of judgment us, you know, we can, we can get that squadron hawk out and we can equip a sword and still establish a reasonable threat. In terms of the removal, we are running four lightning bolt, two arc trail and two journey to nowhere. We wanted a little more consistency on the burn spells, so we cut one journey and threw it in the board. And then we're running a one of on caught. Now over here to the sideboard, which is directly above the lands, we have Journey to Nowhere as a one of, Koth of the Hammer as a one of. Phyrexian Revoker is kind of a new choice. I really like these guys. They, they shut down Jace the Mind Sculptor temporarily. And if they can't draw an answer to it, you can't brainstorm anymore. So have fun with that. Core Firewalker is more for the mirror match and the red decks that are running around. Tunnel Ignis is more for the mirror match, Huldoth the Red and Valakut, because everyone wants to take down Valakut. Pyroclasm is for the Vampires matchup, the Elves matchup, even for maybe, you know, the mirror if you're trying to gain an edge and slow play them out. It's very uh, mediocre against vampires. Um, very good against Kuldoth the Red. Has a very difficult time with Kago, which is just kind of Kago, you know. I do not, Valakut seems like it's gonna be a pretty good matchup, especially after board. Elves is a walk in the park. Tesseret's an interesting choice. I haven't played I haven't played the deck enough to really know how know how to work around it, but in the past I've had a very I've had about a 60 to 65% win rate over blue black control, which is pretty good for an aggro deck considering blue black control is blue black control. And a lot of that has to do with we can outrace them a little bit faster, whereas blue white, like Cago, generally can can ground this out a lot more substantially. On a scale of one to five in terms of difficulty, I would give this deck a three because what makes this deck hard is not over committing and also how you play your landfall creatures. If I have Steppy Links, Steppy Links, Goblin Guide, in my hand, I'm gonna play the Steppy Links turn, turn one. I'm not gonna play the Goblin Guy because we're trying to maximize our landfall damage. So we'd go turn one, Steppy Links. And then we'd 
untap for second turn, play the fetch lang, or attack for two the first time, put him down to 18 with the goblin guide attacking as well, so it'd be putting him down to 16, and then play a steppy lynx. We want to have as many landfall dudes out that can attack with the with the fetch lands, because that that's that's the general premise. That's the main focus is getting the sneaking that damage by. And you, when that fails, you know when we can't when they keep removing our targets, we we have stuff to help us out. We have Stoneforge Mystic. We have Squadron Hawk. We have Mirror and Crusader, which goes great with the swords. Stoneforge Mystic and Bone Horde. You day of judgment me. Nice bone, nice eight eight creature. That's all I gotta say. I'd give it a nine out of ten. It's a great tier one deck. It's something if you have the money to build it, you should take it to a tournament. If you're an aggro player, this is the deck I recommend. It's not it's not completely aggro. It's more of a mid aggro mid range. Because it's got a little bit of a control aspect to it, like the card advantage, you know, the heavy removal, um, some of the stuff we kind of go after after sideboard, like Pyroclasms and Ignis, and Revoker. But that that mid range helps. It helps us. It helps us have a, a broader line of sight with our matchups. If you're willing to spend five to six hundred dollars, be my guest. But I rec five to six hundred dollars face value. I would say the biggest hit is the twelve fetch hand lands. I mean that that's one hundred and twenty dollars out of your pocket right there. You know, and then you and then you have the Crusaders and the Mystics, which is really really going up in price fast. You have the two Koth, you know, the four Goblin Guide. This deck can stack up in price quick. If you can build it, play it. If you can't, keep trying to build it because it's a good deck.